What's happening people and welcome to today's video where I want to briefly cover for you guys 13 different row variations by name as well as characteristic so we can clear up some of this muddiness when it comes to identifying rows. But before I do that, I did just want to say thank you to each and every single one of you who has bought the Everyday Carry Program ebook. It just I've never been so proud of something that I produced in my life and you guys really seem to like it. The response has been amazing and I just cannot thank you guys enough. Like I stated in the last video, that is the number one way to support this channel. So I just, I'm absolutely blown away and I just thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, for today's video, the reason why we are covering this is because prior to that Everyday Carry video, there is a row complex video and a lot of people were wondering the difference between a barbell row versus a deadlift row versus a penlay row. So, I thought I would just briefly cover as many rows as I could think of off the top of my head so that hopefully it will clear up some of the confusion. All right, so row number one is going to be the penlay row. Now, major characteristics here are that your back is going to be almost parallel with the ground and should be held static throughout the movement. Now, you are gonna be pulling the bar up to around your chest area. Some people think that the bar needs to be dead stopped on the ground every single rep while other people think the bar should never touch the ground and each rep should be controlled in the bottom. To be completely honest with you guys, I don't think it matters that much. I think as long as you are doing the pen lay row, then you are doing okay. Row number two is going to be the bent over barbell row. Now for these, I think the starting position is just a couple inches below your knee, almost as if you are in a pause deadlift. And then from there, you're going to pull the bar up to somewhere between your belly button and the bottom of your pecs. You can typically do a decent amount more weight on this than you can on a strict penlay row. Real quick notice here though guys, if you guys are getting any sort of back pain whatsoever on your rows, then you are doing something incorrect technique wise. So please, please, please go over to my row playlist, look through that, learn what is there because you should not be getting any pain whatsoever. If you can perform deadlifts, without serious back pain every single rep, then there is no reason why you should have any back pain whatsoever in the row unless you have the bar or your body in a bad position and that can be fixed. Row number three is going to be the deadlift row, which is an absolute asset to your toolbox if you are not already using it. It starts out as a conventional deadlift and it finishes in a row. For this reason, you can do a lot more weight here. It's basically doing a row with a bunch of leg drive. You still want your back to stay pretty stable and controlled, but you're using all the legs that you possibly can, so it's not rare to see guys doing rows with four, five, 600 pounds in this fashion. Row number four is going to be the Yates row or supinated row. If you do not know what supinated means, it just means that your hand is turned up like you're holding a cup of soup. So basically you're going to use the exact same form as you did in the bent over barbell row, except your hands are going to be facing you in a supinated fashion. Now, some people will tell you that this is an absolute gold mine of an exercise, while other people will tell you the second that you do it, your biceps are just gonna rip and shred in half. Now, for me personally, because of the fear of ripping and shredding my biceps in half, I've never spent any serious time with it and not any serious weight. I would tell you, I probably would not be doing heavy, heavy rows with my hands supinated for fear of the bicep, but you have to do what's best for your training and some people think it's no problem at all. So, to be honest, I don't know. You need to make that decision for yourself. Row number five is going to be the seal row or a chest supported row. Now, either your gym is very well equipped and you have a seal row bench, probably a seal row bar, or you need to build this thing out on your own by stacking up some bumper plates and putting a bench on top of it and just trying to figure it out. So I think it is a super, super effective row and I absolutely love it. I just hate the amount of time that it takes to set up and break down. Um, so if you have the room to invest in a seal row bench, I think that's amazing. But if you don't, um, it gets tough quick. Row number six is the upright row. Now, for fear of using the word undefining in the definition, uh, basically you're going to stand upright and you are going to row, just basically pulling the bar up to your chin. Now, I will tell you, uh, this was a staple of virtually everyone's training back in the day when I was coming up, but everyone made sure that you didn't pull your hands too wide because then it was bad for your shoulders. These days, some people will tell you that it is the absolute worst thing you could possibly do for your shoulders ever, while other people still think it is a really, really useful tool. Um, for me personally, I have never had any shoulder problems doing it. That doesn't mean that I'm not just lucky or genetically gifted for this particular exercise. So you have to do what is best for your training, your own research. 
uh, do what you can do, but it's great for building straps and shoulders if you can get away with it uh, without injury. So for the next three rows that I mentioned, you're gonna be taking one end of that barbell and securing it in the corner or in a landmine apparatus somehow. For row number seven is something that I have always affectionately called the corner barbell row because I had no idea what else to call it. So if you do have a different name for it, please let me know in the comment section down below. But basically you secure one end of the barbell in the corner and then you stand the other end with a bunch of weight and typically some sort of V-shaped handle and you pull the bar towards your body. Now, the only thing I'll say about this is it's a great row, but you need to be very careful that you do weight the back of the barbell down enough Otherwise, that thing can flip up on you, at which time it's going to split the wickets and you're going to have a rough day. Row number eight is going to be the single arm barbell row. And this one is completely underdone, completely underrated, and is probably my favorite row on this entire list of 14 because I feel it more than any other row as far as actually using my back muscles. That said, it is a little bit tough to set up. Now the biggest thing to remember about this movement is that you should be straddling the barbell. It should not be outside of your body. This is going to allow you to move a lot of weight and really feel each and every single row in your back. Try to get good holds. This is such an amazing exercise. I really need to do it more. And then while we're here, you can turn sideways because row number nine is going to be a Meadows row, which is basically a single arm barbell row. You can either do it on a T-bar row. There's a lot of places you can do this, but you are turning your hand pronated uh, to get a little bit different of an angle and squeeze in the motion. Now, the last four rows are all dumbbell variations, and we're gonna start with number 10, which is the single arm dumbbell row. I really hope that all of you have performed this at some sort of time. You wanna keep your back kind of like a tabletop, be strict with your form, get good holds. This is an excellent exercise. It should be a staple of your program if it is not already. Row number 11 is the gorilla row. Now to set this up, you're gonna get in the start of your pen leg row position with two separate dumbbells, except your hands are gonna be inside of your legs. Now you're gonna stay braced, keep your back pretty much parallel to the ground, and then you're gonna vacillate rowing each dumbbell, each side, one at a time. Row number 12 is going to be the renegade row. And here, very simply, you're just basically holding a plank position with your hand on top of dumbbells and taking turns rowing each one of them. Row number 13 is going to be the croc row, which is very similar to a single arm dumbbell row, except you're gonna be using a lot more body English. Now, this is supposed to be extremely heavy, so you are going to be using a strap because your grip is going to give out because you're also supposed to be doing extremely high reps, something like 30, 40, 50, 60 reps, maybe even more. Use a lot of body English. You want to really drive past the point of failure with these, but they're supposed to be absolutely amazing for building your back. All right guys, so that is it. As far as I know, those are accurate terms, names and characteristics for all 13 rows that I just laid out. If you guys have different names, different definitions, different characteristics for any of those, please leave it in the comment section down below so that we can all learn from each other because this is kind of similar to the like Romanian deadlift, stiff like a deadlift situation where everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I absolutely know what the difference between those two things are, but it's all pretty shady, so. Anyway guys, like I said earlier in the video, I thank you guys so much for all the support on the Everyday Carry program. I am so beyond stoked about how it turned out as well as the response to it. So I'm just really, really happy about it. And I cannot thank you guys enough. I will catch you guys later in the week until I do got something amazing in Keep working hard people, be nice to each other. I'll see you then. Bros for the bros.